Adobe After Effects Multi-Frame Rendering Optimal Build Specs. Hello everybody, welcome to Builder Buy. My name is Gil Boyd, I'm your host, I want to thank you for joining us. We're going to be answering a, a subscriber question, Shannon, who had sent us a link to a video. Puget Systems interviewed Adobe developer Sean Jenkin about multi-frame rendering and some of the new technology that's coming out in the Creative Cloud. And I've got some links I want to share with you. We're going to have that up on the description and any, anything I don't cover here, again, will be in the description. But two things I want you to take away from this. One, multi-frame rendering. It's been missing. It's going to be here now. And what kind of performance improvements can you take away from this? And most important is, as we deal with building specs for content creation, we now have a formula where we can look at processor count for the amount of memory and for the amount of GPU memory that's required to meet this specification as a starting point. But as a starting point, we take it a step further, and that'll be another video we do in coming up. So that formula is what we're going to be looking at. What is that formula? Okay, the CPU count times 4 equals the amount of RAM you need. And then number 2, how much video RAM do you need? The number of CPU cores should equal the amount of video RAM you have. For instance, so you build a machine that's got 64 cores, so 64 cores times 4 would be 128 gigs of RAM. Okay, for the video card, if you're looking at, say, 64 cores, then you want to have a video card that's got 64 gigs of RAM on it. Now, the kind of machines that we're going to build, I want to put a chart up and show you. Uh, this is something that Adobe works toward, and i and I got to tell you the disclaimer. I don't use Adobe software. We render with Vegas Pro or we render with DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve free. Now we have a license for DaVinci Resolve Studio. Another video about that. But uh, it's, it's fascinating how this has all changed in terms of how fast we can render based on the GPU, based on the CPU, based on how much memory we've got. And with this formula, let's take a look. Now this is on the Adobe blog by Michelle Galena, Multi-Frame Rendering Now in After Effects Beta. They're working on the beta. If you want to participate, I'll have a link up here where you can figure out how to get your information up because that is how they're going to fix whatever problems they've got. Because you got to remember, Adobe After Effects has about 250 different um, effects and those are all going to be, by the time the beta is done, multi-frame rendering aware. So that's a big deal. And what kind of performance improvement are you going to see? Based on the specs I'm getting ready to show you, we're looking at a machine that could be two to three times as fast, which means if it's been taking 30 minutes, it could take 15 minutes. If it's been taking 45 minutes, it could take 15 minutes. That significance, time is money. Now there's a couple of videos embedded in this blog. The first one and the second one, probably more importantly, this is the video with Puget Systems that Shannon sent that talks about what I'm going to share with you that I want to extrapolate, MFR and those specs. And right below it, if you'll notice, we've got a core count, four to six minimum specs a mid-range system 8 to 10, and a high-end 16 to 64. Okay, what they're calling on a high-end for what we're doing for content creation. So we've uh, talked about X299, we've built on the X399, we've built on the TRX40, and we're looking at building a machine on the WRX80. However, because of Thunderbolt 4 from our last video, changing one thing changes everything, we are now going to build a machine based on the B550. So we're looking at the ASUS ProArt B550 machine because number one, it has Thunderbolt 4 support. Number two, if we put in a 5000 series processor, we'll be able to have PCI Express 4 on that primary M.2 NVMe drive. Anything less than that, then we lose that ability because then we're PCI Express 3. Okay, based on these specs for 16 cores, 16 cores is what we're looking at on that machine. And once we get through looking at these specs, then we'll take a look at PC Part Picker and see how that machine plays out. So if we're looking at 16 cores, or if we're looking at, say, for a 5000 series AMD processor, because we want Thunderbolt 4, we could go as few as, I believe, 12 cores. With 16 cores times 4, that's 64 gigs of RAM. Not to confuse, but to simplify, this information given is on the blog, given, of course, by Adobe. But the information I'm going to give you are the words out of the mouth of Sean Jenkin. And what he had said takes that spec a step further. So if we have 16 cores times 4, that's 64 gigs of RAM. If we're looking at 12 cores times 4, that's 48 gigs of RAM. So if we're looking at 16 cores, let's go into uh, PC Part Picker and we'll get another perspective on this. So with PC Part Picker, we've got a 16 core processor. This is a 5000 series. So with this, we would want to put 64 gigs of RAM. Okay, on this particular machine, 
The first thing we chose was the chipset because of Thunderbolt 4, so we're using the ASUS ProArt B550. And for those that are searching, I have found one vendor that has it. It's at a $30 premium. I'm waiting on ASUS out of their store. It is also not available at Newegg right now, but this is a constantly changing, very fluid situation. So right now, that board is showing up at $330, but I've seen it for $300. That's the list price. That's what I'm waiting on. And I will probably buy that direct from ASUS. The processor has been a better price. This is a ridiculous price. It's about an $800 processor. So with $300 plus an $800 processor, we're looking at $1,100. Then with the memory, 64 gigs would be optimal for that processor. We're going to max it out at 128 gigs. Because remember, this is a starting point. And then the big kicker is the video card. We always have to remember, a machine requires three components, three basic components, RAM, motherboard, and processor. So we got that squared away. But the two things that are the kicker are the video card and the power supply. And based on the video card, that can change what power supply we need. For example, if we use an RTX 3090, then we're going to need 750 watts just for the video card, which means we need to put 1,000 watts or 1,200 watts in that machine. Okay, for a machine like this, if we put a workstation video card in there that only has to have 300 watts, then we can bump that down to about an 850 or a 950 watt power supply. So changing one thing can change everything. I will say what I would recommend is a workstation class card and not a regular consumer desktop card. And the reason why. It's all about the video drivers. When you use a workstation class card, you're using a different video. You're using a different video driver. Now with the... Uh, all the NVIDIA chipsets, there's two different sets of drivers. There's the studio driver, which is more of a, it's a more stable driver. And then there's the gaming driver. For what we use for content creation, we use the studio driver. But when you're working with an AMD card, and remember it's about the memory number one, CUDA cores number two. But with the memory, you also get the CUDA cores. So when you're looking at an AMD card, and, I, and I'm referencing this because this is a good match for this system based on price. Our recommendation on this machine would be an AMD Radeon Pro 7. Now the previous generation of that that's comparable to that card, and that's got 16 gigs of RAM, is the AMD Radeon Pro WX9100. The number one machine that we render on has an AMD Radeon Pro WX9100. Now why is that important? Well about a couple of years ago when we ran the test, we did a video on it, and we talked about performance and what you get with the CPU and GPU. It was 90% CPU, 10% on the GPU. Well now with Vegas Pro 18 that's been turned around and with Vegas Pro 18 I ran that a few days ago just on a fluke to see what was going on and my gosh I know it blows through video as long as it's just video but when you hit effects it slows down to a crawl. How fast? 80%, 80% on the GPU using an AMD Radeon Pro WX9100. Okay this card is comparable. The price is a little bit ridiculous but aren't they all? And that card should be around uh, $100 less, so it should be at $2,000, and right now it's at $2,350. So the question becomes, how much video card can we get for the amount of memory that we need based on the formula for CPU core count times 4 equals the amount of RAM, and for 1080 video, for each CPU core, you need 1 gig of video RAM. So if you've got, say, so for each CPU core, for 1080 resolution requires 1 gig of video RAM. That means if we have a 16 core processor, we need a 16 gig video card. If we follow that formula based on what Adobe tells us. And again, we don't work with Adobe software, but I find this information absolutely fascinating. And since the question came up, I want to thank Shannon for sending this to us because I, I think it's a, a fascinating video. Take a look at it from Puget Systems. It's worth the time. It's a hard video to find unless you're looking for it because of the way they've got it listed, but uh, we'll have it in the description, and it's also in one of the descriptions from the blog. But I want to go take a look at video cards and show you three options. Now, not all options become apparent to us, but because we're using PC Part Picker for this, and yes, this particular machine has a 1,200-watt power supply in it, but I'll bring up another link to another set it drops that down to an 850 watt. Now with that particular card, that changes things drastically going to an 850 watt power supply. But I like the what if with PC Part Picker. So let's take a look at video cards just based on memory, irregardless of the chipset. And we start at the top of the uh, pile, there's a Quadro RTX 8000. Okay, that's one of the older cards, and now we have coming into the pipeline 
the RTX A6000 that's got 48 gigs. So the RTX A6000, I think, is a better bang for the buck in that class for that amount of memory on a card. And by the way, it's supposed to be right on par on price with that, but maybe a little bit better. We're going to have some more information about the RTX A6000 and the RTX A5000 later. But as it relates to this right now in these build specs, if we're looking at something that says has, uh, now there's a Fire Pro 9100 with 32 gigs. But if we look here for an RTX 3090 with 24 gigs, that's at the top of the pile. That's $3,500. But if we drop it down and go from 24 gigs, we're still RTX 3090s that are not available. We look at and a Quadro that's not available in an M6000. We drop down to 16 gigs, and this changes depending on availability. There's a Radeon RX 6800. Okay, that's a consumer card for $2,100. I would not use a consumer card for content creation. It's all about the drivers. I want a more stable driver. If I'm using an AMD Workstation card, even though I have a desktop computer, I'm using Workstation drivers, meaning they're more stable. And those are the drivers we use on the primary machine we render because, again, we use Vegas Pro 18 to do a lot of stuff because it's, it's really fast. What it slows down on, because I don't have CUDA cores, is when it hit effects, it slows to a crawl. So we're going to be doing some other testing on some other cards on the other platforms because we built the X399, we've built the TRX40, and we're going to be building the WRX80 because those are based on PCI Express resource allocations. Uh, what we're looking at now, based on content creation, number one, Thunderbolt 4, number two, because it's ProArt, and number three, it's an entry-level machine, but it gives us a segue with ProArt because we're going to talk about a ProArt monitor for color grading at an entry level and taking that a step beyond. But for what we needed to cover for these specs, the two things we wanted you to get, number one, Adobe After Effects, multi-frame rendering, and number two, what's the formula for the specs? The processor count times four, equals the amount of RAM you need. And if you're doing 1080 resolution, the CPU count should equal the video RAM count. So if you have 64 cores, 64 gig video card. If you have 16 cores, 16 gigs for video RAM. And that's what we wanted to impart to you guys. So Shannon, I hope that answers your question. That's our take on those specs because it's all about perspective. You know, change one thing changes everything and uh, never say never about any of this stuff. I'm eager to build on the B550 because I want to see Thunderbolt 4 come to fruition, but I'm even more excited about building on the WRX80. That just, uh, boy, that gets me, that gives me goosebumps. So I hope you enjoyed this. Now, coming up in the next video, we're going to be, because we got to step back and do some stuff with the, uh, and we've been asked about this repeatedly, we're working on it, but it was about staging so we could do the M.2 speed and heat test. We're going to do a comparison of two different cards. But to stage that, the next video coming up is going to be about a vertical GPU mount. We're going to use that vertical GPU mount in this case not to do a vertical GPU, but so we can get the M.2 card up and out of the machine. And one aspect is getting the card up because we got to have in the same plane for the thermal camera. But number two, getting connection with the bus. We've got two different cables we're going to try. So depending on how that goes, then the next video after that is going to be about the heat and speed test. So one thing has to happen before something else can happen. It's just the way things progress. But you guys know how we like to document this stuff, and I hope you all appreciate this. I want to thank you all for watching, and you all know the drill. On to the next video.